I've had one of those dreaded moments. I pushed the power button on my AC300 and nothing happened. Completely dead. The screen doesn't come on, not even the power button lights up. Now, the power button on the battery lights up, and then after a minute it starts blinking, and then after a little while, the blinking stops. I've been running this unit for more than a year with daily charging from solar and discharging with a dehumidifier. We had more than 20 days in a row this winter with no sun. I typically keep the AC input connected with a minimum of a 10% battery threshold to keep the unit from turning off completely. Typically when this happens with lithium batteries, you can use an external charger to slowly bring them back up to a minimum charge and you're good to go again. However, in this case, the inverter won't even recognize the battery, so no input, neither the AC input, which is currently connected, nor the DC input, which is currently connected to solar panels, will charge the battery. It won't even come on. I thought, no problem. The battery has its own separate inputs. So I tried to charge it directly with solar and other DC chargers directly to the battery with no success. Now, this unit is under warranty and I could send it back for service, but that would be a pain. And there's probably some of you out there that have had this problem and you're out of warranty. So I'm gonna try and fix it myself. Let's get started. Okay, first I should warn you, this is very dangerous and it will definitely void your warranty. If you don't know anything about electronics, do not attempt this. If you touch the wrong thing or accidentally short something, you could shock yourself or destroy the battery. That being said, I was right. The battery was under discharged at 34.5 volts. I was able to use this EG4 48 volt 5 kilowatt charge verter to bring this battery back up to 45 volts. And now everything works again. You can see the display is on, it's charging, it's charged back up to 55%, which is what I have it set for, and everything works with no issues. I know this looks like a huge complicated mess, but it's actually really simple. First, I disconnected the positive main terminal and the negative main terminal, which is on this side, and it connects to the board right here. Now the negative terminal is isolated from the battery and the rest of the components right here. The positive and negative ter terminals are connected with these XT60 connectors. So they're very easy to disconnect and interact with. So all I did is disconnect the two battery terminals, check the voltage, then charge it at four amps with the charge verter. And now after doing this for the first time and seeing how all the terminals are wired, I think there is a much simpler way to do it by removing only the back panel. The positive battery terminal and the positive charging lead are directly connected to the same bus. Because of that, this positive lead, which leads outside to the battery connection point, I can access from outside the battery. I don't actually have to take this side of the battery apart to get to it. So I think we can take care of this whole problem by connecting to the positive on the outside, removing just the back panel, and grabbing the negative terminal on the inside from there. So let's give it a try on battery number two. Removing just the back panel is not that difficult, but there's a couple of tricks you have to know. There's four obvious screws to remove, and then you can warm up these two stickers a little bit with a heat gun, and there's an additional four screws right behind the ends of the sticker. Those have to be removed, and then we can pop this panel off. All right, from the wires, I can see that the positive terminal is the outside terminal on the outer plug. So I'll put my positive on that terminal, and the negative on this terminal, and just like the other battery, 34.4 volts. So now I know I have connection directly to the battery using just this back panel opening, which is dramatically less work than disassembling the entire battery. So now we just need to connect negative to here and positive to this outer point and give it a charge. All right, I'm using the actual cable so that I have a socket, and then I'll use banana clips that I flared out slightly to connect to both of these connectors. Now, just to double check that I have everything right, I'm going to check the voltage, and I have the right-hand side of the plug as the positive, and then this is the negative, and I am getting 35 volts, so that's what it should be. Now I know I have the right polarity and the right connection points. Before I get started, I'll turn on the EG4 um, charge verter and set the voltage to 45 volts and the current to one amp, although it seems to be unable to put out less than four amps. I'm just making sure it's as small an output as possible. And then I won't turn the breaker on until my settings are set, these are connected, and then I can charge. So now I'll go ahead and turn it on. Now we're jumping up to about four amps. Started out at 39, it's up to 41 volts. 
Wow, that was so much easier. And because we were so far off the edge of the charging curve, it only took about three minutes to bring it up to 45 volts. Now I can connect the inverter and charge at a slow 5 amp charging rate up to 5%, and then I'll bump it up to 10 amps to bring it to a storable charge of 55%. Once I have the whole system put back together, I'll charge it to 100% to top balance all of the cells. All right, moment of truth, let's plug this thing in. There it goes, powering up. I actually fixed it. Actually, Josiah and I actually fixed it. <laughs> you see 600 watts coming in. Right now I can see on the screen that it's charging. I'll let it sit here for a while, get up to about 20%, then I'll shift it to a 10 amp charging rate. We'll bring it up to 55%. It's recognizing the battery. Everything's working again. That was a much simpler fix, and now we're good to go. All right, now I have to put this whole mess back together. Fortunately, I have a handy son-in-law to help me. If you don't have a handy son-in-law, you should get one. <laughs> <laughs> if you follow his instructions, you won't have to completely disassemble this thing. You can just take off the back panel. Thanks to us for recognizing that after disassembling the whole thing. So hopefully this has been helpful. And if you have this problem, you'll be able to solve it pretty simply and you won't have to worry about throwing away a very expensive and very capable battery backup system. If you wanna see my full in-depth review of the AC300, I do all kinds of testing, actual use. I use it in lots of different conditions. You can watch that video right here. And if I have any other content that's relevant, I'll connect it here as well. I hope this has been helpful. Thanks for watching Projects with Everyday Dave, and I'll see you next time.